welcome uh, today i'm going to talk about jenkins pipeline uh, before i start um, i would like to know if you people have any experience of using jenkins before mm, no. no okay uh, so about me i'm puneet i'm from india and uh, i'm currently leading the google summer of code team for joomla and other than the gsoc uh, team i have also been involved in the automation testing team with joomla project so uh, as part of my professional work i do a lot of uh, continuous integration and builds um, and that's where my experience of jenkins pipeline comes into picture um, recently we moved all of our integrations from uh, third parties like travis uh, to jenkins and that's when i thought that i should do a presentation about it and introduce it to the other people in the community uh, about the presentation i'm just going to give you a brief introduction in terms of uh, just like a brief overview so that you pick people get a picture of what jenkins pipeline is all about uh, give you an introduction about few concepts of jenkins and then maybe if you want to dive into deeper you can always read the documentation and you can always get in touch with me so i can help you out in that case so the first reason the first question that comes to mind is why i preferred using jenkins uh, as you might know that jenkins is got a very big open source community and the amount of documentation and the amount of um, uh, help that you get online the amount of blogs and people uh, doing things with jenkins you read a lot of things so when, whenever you are stuck uh, with something in jenkins you get a, you get help easily you get easy documentation and there are many plugins in jenkins so for example if you want to do something most of the times there might be some plugin already available for it so you don't have to put in a lot of effort of creating something from your side you can always find a plugin for it online uh, again it's an on premise installation so you have you can have a server of your own and you can install it and you can start um, using jenkins straight away out of the box uh it has an integration uh it can integrate to any tool that you use uh, for your communication for your scm it has many integrations available so uh what is jenkins pipeline it's hello welcome uh jenkins pipeline is basically a visual representation of your continuous integration and continuous delivery system so when you have something in place and you want to see how does it visually look like uh, imagine a pipeline where you want to uh, where you have you want to m make the water flow from one end to another that's the same way a pi pipeline is you have your code from your scm and you want to deliver it on your staging or your production server so the process that code that part of that piece of code goes through is a visual representation in jenkins pipeline and it's a suite of plugins from jenkins that is called jenkins 2.0 i think now um, so this is a typical scenario that suits um, perfectly for a jenkins pipeline where you have your scm you make a commit to your uh, source code and then you have several processes that you want the code to go through you make package out of it then you deploy the code on a a, a, a testing server where you do unit testing on it then you do integration test on it and when you are sure you are certain that okay the build looks stable enough and i want to deploy it on staging or my production server and you can go ahead and do that with jenkins pipeline so this is how a typical pipeline would look like now um, uh, um is it okay if i stand so um, you have your build that is basically your source code where it starts from and then you have different stages on each stage you do a different process for example there would be a test stage and then there would be a browser test stage dev staging and production um so uh, for the people those who just joined in it's just an introduction about jenkins pipeline uh, i just covered uh, what is the typical scenario of jenkins pipeline i would like to know how many of you have an experience of using jenkins before okay do you have experience of using jenkins pipeline as well no okay so i was just explaining uh, what jenkins pipeline is and uh, this is a typical scenario in which it would ideally um, be the best solution where you have your source code and where you have different testing that you want the source code uh, the commit to go through and finally when you are sure that everything is working fine your tests are passing 
you want to deploy it on your staging or production server. Uh, this is how a typical uh, Jenkins uh, build would look like where you can have different stages you can name the stages you can call it uh, test browser test uh, you can have a dev packaging a stage deployment and a production server deployment that's how a typical Jenkins pipeline look like so uh, the first thing is how do I set up Jenkins pipeline uh, as I mentioned earlier in my session when I started it's a combination of multiple plugins from Jenkins once you install them on Jenkins, you uh, have to create a new item and then you have to just, uh, it should be a multi-branch pipeline and you have to add source. So basically if you're using GitHub or GitLab, whatever is your SEM, you have to add the, hello, welcome. Uh, you have to add those in your uh, configuration. And then finally you have to add a Jenkins file in your SEM, source code management, just like uh, we add a travis.yaml file or a drone.yaml file for different CI systems for Jenkins pipeline it is a Jenkins file and once you have added that you have to just create a webhook that will basically send all the uh, notifications and uh, um, whenever you send a new commit on the on the source on, on github so how does a Jenkins uh, file looks like? It's basically a definition of your Jen Jenkins pipeline. You mention what are the agents that you want to run this pipeline on. You mention different stages that you want to run uh, on your pipeline. So you can call your stages build, test, deploy, depending on whatever workflow you have in your work, uh, at your company. So um, in 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 typically it would have a, a test stage, and then finally once you know that everything is working and the build is stable enough you would have a deploy stage and that would be uh, the complete pipeline uh, the syntax that jenkins files uh, supports is a declarative pipeline and a scripted pipeline i have experience of using declarative so I, my session is more focused on declarative but you can also use scripted pipeline syntax if you want to use on your jenkins file uh, so uh, let's go through some important concepts in terms of uh, uh, Jenkins pipeline, things that you must know. And uh, if you want to dive in deeper, as I said, you can look into the documentation and there's more information available. The idea of the session is to give you people a brief overview about Jenkins pipeline. So uh, you can just uh, look into it deeper if you want to. So the first thing is stages. What are stages in Jenkins? Uh, stage is basically uh, when you want to perform certain sets of operation you, for example a test stage where you want to perform different tests you call it stage and a stage would comprise comprom a stage can have multiple stages or it can have multiple steps that you want to execute on that so in in case of the example that you see on the screen uh, there are three stages in this um, there is a build stage there is a test stage and there is a deploy stage Pipeline steps. Now, uh, the next important concept is what is a pipeline step? Uh, for example, um, you can have multiple steps that you want to do in a stage. You can say that I want to run unit test. I want to do these, these, these steps for running my unit test. And you can call that, you can call, you can wrap them in a stage called unit test. So you can have several step, steps in a unit test stage. Uh, that's the idea behind steps. You can have multiple steps in a stage. Uh, what is a declarative pipeline? How would you interpret a Jenkins file with a declarative pipeline? Um, if you look at this example, it's clear enough that uh, gen whenever you have a, a, a Jenkins file with declarative pipeline, Jenkins would read it in the way it is. For example, starting with agent, um, when you mention agent any, it knows that um, it can be executed on any available node. The first out of all the stages block, the first stage that Jenkins is supposed to run is build. Once it gets into the build stage, there are several steps that you mentioned that I want to do these, these, these things, maybe check out or maybe pull some other repository depending on the workflow. The next stage is test where once it is successful, once the build stage is successful, Jenkins would go to the test stage and execute the steps mentioned in the test stage. And similarly, once the test stage is successful, it will go to the deploy stage and finally deploy it on whatever server you want to deploy it on. 
at failure uh, you can mention failure steps uh, in case of a failure of uh, build stage what you want to do you can mention your own custom notifications you can decide where you want to notify maybe for example you might have a different build team and you might have a different test team so you can send different notifications based on the failures in build stage or a test stage you can define common notifications also out of uh, for all the three stage in if it, if it fails in any of them you can have a common notification sent to your github repo or to your uh, communication to like slack or glip or whatever you prefer so um, this is how a multi stage pipeline looks like where you have a build package test and deploy that's the example you see here this is how it would look like on jenkins pipeline so now the next thing is uh, parallel stages uh, Jenkins pipeline comes with uh, an option to run multiple stages in parallel obviously you might have st stages that are not dependent on each other for example you can have unit test and system testing running together in parallel or you can have test running on Chrome browser and Firefox running in parallel or you can have test for Windows environment as you see in the example and you can have tests running on Linux environment and you can have them run in parallel the way you define it is you have a, a parallel uh, you can you have to define a parallel keyword and then in parallel keyword you can define the stages that you want to run in parallel it is fairly simple and straightforward you can just uh, try it out if you want to so this is how a parallel pipeline uh, would look like a build for parallel pipeline where you have the build stage and once the build stage is gone there are two stages in parallel one is on test on chrome and one is test on firefox once that is passed you go to the deploy stage and that's the end of your pipeline the another important concept in jenkins pipeline is stashing and unstashing now uh, i'm not sure if you people already know about it but there was another feature in jenkins which was archiving artifacts where you can archive an artifact from previous stage and use it in the next stage this is similar to archiving but it's uh, more fast in terms of uh, getting back the resource so for example imagine you at every stage you want to uh, install chrome driver or you want to do a vendor composer update and it takes a lot of time so to avoid those things you can reuse the uh, resources in each parallel stage so for example imagine that you do a you fetch a particular um, file in one of the stage and then you can use the command stash and Jenkins will make sure that it is available to all the other stages in the pipeline. So in this example, if you see, I have a stage test. In that stage, I have a um, test on Windows where I'm fetching Chrome driver. It's just an example, I can change it. Uh, and then in test on Linux, I'm again fetching a Chrome driver, but I don't want to fetch Chrome driver again because I've already done it. So I just do a deploy stage where I can say unstash Chrome driver Linux or unstash, unstash Chrome driver Windows. So it saves me a lot of time. Uh, similarly, for uh, if you if you want to uh, pull in Joomla CMS, now you don't want to do it on every stage where you are doing testing. You just want to do it once and you want to reuse it uh, using the stash unstash feature of Jenkins pipeline. Uh, do you have any question on this? Oh, is it clear? Okay. Other than the basic cons, the base, the the most important concepts of stages, steps, and stash and stash. There is another uh, important concept in Jenkins that is Jenkins pipeline options, where you define what should be the time or there are a lot of options. I did. I am not mentioning all of them. I am just mentioning the ones that you might use. Uh, the ones that are very common. Uh, for example, time out. You want to specify the time out that you want to set for your build in case it is stuck somewhere and it's not able to identify if it's a failure or a pass you don't want your build to be running for 24 hours or 48 hours you want to specify the timeout for your build uh, there is a internal log manager in jenkins pipeline which is a good feature where you specify for how many days do you want to keep the build artifacts because if you have many uh, pull requests coming in if you have many extensions uh, the log size would keep on increasing and you need to you need to find a way where you want to make sure 
logs before four days or ten days or fifteen days should be discarded and removed from the system. That's a way to clean your um, server, and that can be done through build discard. Uh, co disable concurrent builds is basically a way of telling Jenkins, uh, hey, if there are uh, two builds running for the same PR, you have to disable the one which is the recent one, and uh, you have to run the one which is the recent one and wait. Once it is over, you can start the new build coming in for the same PR. So that would basically help you in uh, optimizing your server performance and giving you better results with Jenkins. Retry is a very good option where you, for example, if you, how many, how many of you run test on a CI server? Uh, do you do system testing on CI server? Anyone has experience of that? Okay. Um, we at my workplace we do a lot of system testing uh, on ca servers and the most common scenario that we people face is false positives we know that the tests are passing but there is something happening on selenium or somewhere which is causing the builds to fail and it's a very difficult job to start over it again because it's too time consuming so you come to know that your build has failed it's it is showing a failure but it was a false positive and you need to find a way to restart it automatically and that's where retry option comes into picture you specify to a particular command you say that okay um, you in case of a failure you can retry it and you can provide the number as a parameter for example retry two times retry three times and in case of a false positive the retry option makes sure that in the next run it is uh, passing if it was a false positive and if it is actually a failure you come to know that it is actually a failure so that's where it comes in handy. You don't have to do it manually every time and you know that it works now. So um, it's just a small example from my workplace where, um, so the thing was we were using Travis for uh, most of our CI, uh, continuous integration and testing stuff. And we have a lot of system UI tests, uh, more than 500 actually, which took a lot of time. Uh, the build timings were really worse. We had a matrix which parallel uh, execution, but still the timings were more than 90 minutes to get results. And we had to depend on third parties, as I mentioned, on Travis. And there would sometimes there would be some changes at their end, which would cause our builds to fail because it was not an on-premise installation. We had no control over it. So we started using Jenkins and we started using Docker's with Jenkins. So as you can see in this example, I'm using a Docker image, which is a Docker system test image. You can use, or use your own Docker images. You can create your own Docker images based on your requirements, and then you can start using them for your Jenkins build. Um, you can also use the ones that are available. Uh, in Joomla, uh, we have a lot of testing images um, that you can use for your system test or unit test. So we started using lot. Uh, we started using Docker uh, images with uh, parallel steps, the ones that I showed you here. Similarly, uh, we use a lot of parallel steps, uh, stages. Sorry, and uh, we use the stash unstash feature. So what we do is basically we fetch Joomla CMS for testing our extension. We install our extension on Joomla CMS, and then we we prepare an archive of this and stash it in the build stage and then once we go, go to the parallel stages we unstash that and we start using it for testing so we don't have to install joomla again on our server on the on the build we don't have to install the extension again it is every everything is already installed we just have to unarchive unstash it and then start using it for testing whatever scenario we want to test and um, the timings have reduced from 90 minutes to 20 minutes so if you can see in this image, uh, those are the amount of tests we are doing on Jenkins pipeline at the moment. And it's more, um, so the Docker setup is basically for fetching the Docker image. Uh, the test setup is basically for installing uh, Joomla CMS and the extension that we want to test on with the new code from the pull request. We deploy it on, the, on our test server, the package that we create. And once we do that, we have many steps, uh, stages in parallel, as you can see in the image. All of them, they take around 10 to 15 minutes for execution. 
and if you would do that in Travis or in any other third party system it's not possible for us even drone doesn't support this kind of architecture so in terms of scalability in terms of uh, uh, being able to scale your uh, deployment your CD uh, C continuous integration and delivery you get a very good option with Jenkins of course you have to make sure that you focus on optimization as I mentioned with the uh, build discard you need to make sure that your server has enough capacity to run many stages in parallel uh, but if you have a very good server and if you have um, uh, you if you have enough tests then I think Jenkins pipeline should be the right setup for you because the power of parallel stages and stash unstash along with docker images uh, it's just too good with uh, the pipeline solution um, I think that was it from my slide. It was um, about an introduction of Jenkins. If you people have any questions, just feel free to ask me about it. Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, how does it work, uh, building um, custom Docker image and use it? Uh, it so uh, you we, can yeah. put a Docker file and uh, yeah. uh, you can just create your own Docker image and then publish it on Docker Hub or uh, and then just uh, mention that in your um, Jenkins file. So for example, this is available on Docker Hub. The image that you see, can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, this. Uh, well. Can you specific uh, another register so you have to load in the Docker Hub? Uh, you can have without docker hub also it should be fine I think uh, but in our case we do it via docker hub uh, you can have it on the server itself you can create your own docker image and just load it from the server it should be fine you don't have to publish it on docker hub uh, in our case it's public it's publicly available we use it for different purpose in Joomla CMS as well so we just publish it on docker hub so um, if you want you can just have your own docker image on the server you don't need to publish it and you can use that as well and the steps are quite straightforward you just mention what you want to do and everything is executed inside the docker image it's not executed on the server but inside the docker so image on the server. Uh, agent docker every command is learning yeah inside, inside the, the docker image okay. yeah that's the benefit of so uh, that's the reason why it becomes very easy when it is parallel you don't share workspace every stage is having its own workspace so you can do multiple operations even similar operations on similar files and it should work just fine out of the box mm, okay. any other question so did you get your answer or uh, still did you get the answer or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah. okay um thank you very much for attending my session and if you guys have any question just feel free to ping me on glip or you can just write me an email uh, that's my name puneet kala uh, you can find me on github as well anywhere you want to get in touch with thank you, thank you.